Today we're going to take a look at The Boys Are Back in Town by Thin Lizzy, a great number from 1976. Uh, I think it was their most famous song, and the drums are provided by the most excellent Brian Downey. This is a lovely shuffle with an opportunity to focus on some open hi-hat moves, and uh, it's just a, an all-around feel-good number, good for any sort of um, covers band, pub band, whatever you want to call it, and uh, one that's worth knowing it's brisk, it's energetic, and uh, let's get stuck in. Here's a quick demonstration of what the thing sounds like. So let's take a look at this groove and if you'd like any one-on-one -on -one help with this or anything else drum related you can find my contact details in the description below. I'm joethedrummer.com and I can give you lessons on Zoom or Skype or you can find me in Northwest London as well. So to start off with obviously we've got eighth note shuffle on the hi-hat. I recommend playing tip of the stick on top of the cymbals and keep it as light as possible. Uh, the hi-hat's going to cut through no matter what and you want to keep yourself relaxed and keep the sound as, as crisp as you can. The snare is going to play two and four, it's rock and roll. Next, we're going to add the bass on the three, the and of three, and the and of four. And this is the main groove that goes throughout the choruses, uh, the intro, and also in the verse of the song. Okay, so we've got this. In the intro and choruses, we're going to provide support to the guitar riffs by accentuating the and of three and the and of four every two bars. And we're going to accentuate the and of three with a pea soup with an open hi-hat. Pea soup. Don't have to open it too much. And we're going to crash the four and. So it sounds like this, just the bar with the, the accents in it. Now, if this is something a little bit challenging, I'm going to break this down for you. So we're going to focus on just three and four and, and we're going to think about how everything moves. And you may have noticed in the demo or in, in my little uh, bit just now that I'm not keeping the shuffle going. I'm, I'm leaving a few breaks in my right hand pattern. So I'll explain that. First thing is we're going to play the three and the and. So remember, it's bass on the three, bass on the and, but I'm also opening the hi-hat. Okay. Now the hi-hat has to close on the four and at that time I'm going to play the snare as well so I don't need to play the right hand on the hi-hat okay? and it, it allows me a little room to breathe, it allows me to stay relaxed. Okay. My left foot and left hand are going to work together and that should be reasonably straightforward to coordinate. It's really worth taking the time with this groove or anything else to break things down and really think about how your limbs are moving together. Um, a lot of people um, feel a little bit impatient, so do I, to be honest. And uh, whenever I, I do this kind of method where I break things down and play things really slowly to myself, um, I find that when I then play things at the normal speed of a song, uh, everything lines up a bit better. So if you haven't done this before, I strongly recommend you try and do it rather than just leaping in and having a go at playing at the, the regular speed of the song. Okay, tempo I should say. So. You want to close the hi-hat very crisply and you want to listen carefully for accuracy between the snare, the left hand and the left foot so that they're exactly together. And then we're ready to add the crash on the forehand. Practice that as much as you like.
get it relaxed, you get it sounding tight and accurate, then when you play it at the normal speed again, it should sound good. You notice that I don't have to play the hi-hat with my right hand on the four, uh, and after I've struck the crash, oh, I almost forgot what it was called, after I struck the crash on the and of four, I also don't need to come back to the hi-hat until we get to the, um, the two of the next bar. And again, it leaves me a little bit of space, especially with a, a fast-ish groove like this, it doesn't hurt to have little moments of rest. So let's take a look at the two-bar phrase, and you can notice how I'm missing out the uh, right hand hi-hat on the four after the open hi-hat pea soup sound and also on the one and the and after the crash on the four and, okay? So like this. As I said already 9,000 times, work on that nice and slowly until it sounds beautiful and relaxed. Now you know what to do with the intro slash chorusy bit, you also know what to do with the verse. It's the same groove, but you just have to be more judicious with the open hi-hat bits. Uh, Brian Downey's providing a little bit of emphasis here and there, the occasional four-and uh, or three-and open hi-hat. Uh, very occasionally a crash, but remember it's our job to provide support for the song, so we're not going to get in the way of the singer, the whole vibe of the song kind of uh, drops dynamically, so all you need to do is work on playing the groove uh, a little bit tighter, a little bit quieter, and just figure out when to provide a little bit of emphasis here and there with your pea soups. For the guitar solo, well it's a duet really, um, we've got a bit more open hi-hat action happening. There's a couple of bits where uh, Brian Downey is opening the hi-hat on a whole string of ands. We get something that sounds like this. And the, uh, the observant among you may have noticed that the first couple of times I kept the flow going of the eighth note. But the second couple of bars, I uh, interrupted the flow, so I was playing uh, with the stick only on the ands. It's enough, right? You, you don't really need to play the, the stroke with the, the hi-hat closing, so you're playing the ands but, but not the one, two, three, and four, whichever numbers are relevant here. Uh, the bass is providing some emphasis with the open hi-hat. And uh, doing something like that, it can make the sound open up a little bit, gives you a little bit of breathing room, and also lets you rest. So when you're playing a song like this that might feel a little bit brisk, um, having an opportunity like that to rest, similarly with the, the, the other bits we were talking about, but you're letting your right hand, or whichever hand you're playing, the lead with, uh, letting it have a little bit of a rest there. So now you know what to play in the song, you might notice that using all these open hi-hat pea soup thingies sounds a little bit mushy and indistinct, and if you haven't worked on this specifically before, it's quite a good idea to spend some time playing slowly and carefully and just letting your body work out all the necessary coordination. So to that end, let's play a bit of an exercise that will help us get used to that. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take the same bass drum pattern, the same shuffle that we're playing throughout the song, based on the three, the under three, and the under four, and then we're going to add uh, an open hi-hat pea soup sound on each of the ands in turn, starting with the one and, then we're going to do the two and, then we're going to do the three and, then we're going to do the four and. We're going to focus on each one of those a little bit. Uh, I'll just demonstrate sort of four bars of each. So first of all we're going to open on the one and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bass drum to uh, support the sound of that as well. So I'm going to add a bass on the and of one. So it goes like this. Next, let's put the bass on the two and. Then the three and. And 
Finally, the forehand. Once you've got the hang of that and it's sounding good, again, keep it nice and slow and listen to yourself very carefully and uh, you know, record yourself and listen back. And you can work on that with all the ands being played on the hi-hat and you can also learn how to drop out on the stroke that, that comes after the open hi-hat. So for example, if I'm doing the open hi-hat on the one and, I'm gonna miss out the two, so like this. And so on. Next, let's open the hi hat on all the ands. A shuffle disco, I guess. Sounds like this. Next, let's look at opening the hi hat on the numbers in turn. Uh, I'm going to play the bass whenever I open the hi-hat and then keep the, the core bass drum pattern going. So the first one would be this. And uh, again, you'll see when I open the hi-hat, I'm not playing the and immediately after. Then we're gonna do the two. I'm gonna be playing the snare, so obviously we don't need the bass. Hmm. See, now when I do that slowly, I notice that I'm slightly early with the, the hi-hat, so that's bringing to my attention that I could work to improve my coordination there. Next, we've got the three, and we're going to have to coordinate the left foot and the right foot together on the three and. Okay, again, it highlights little bits of tension and resistance that come up in the body. Finally, let's play the open hi-hat on the four. Finally, for an extra coordination challenge, let's open the hi-hat on the numbers. One, two, three, four. So we're playing quarter notes. And that means that your left foot's gonna have to close the hi-hat on the ands, like this. You can play quarters up on the hi-hat with your stick or eighth notes. It's probably a good idea to work on both of those. Let's see how it sounds. And with the full shuffle. Tricky. I, I can feel all sorts of funny things happening with my sense of balance there. Things like that are really good for allowing your body to settle in and uh, figure out what to do when you actually have to support yourself just with the chair, just with your drummer's throne, should I say. I think that'll do for this video. Uh, hopefully that's given you a lot of stuff to work on and to think about. Remember, it's very, very important to practice the mechanics of what we do uh, and not just play along to songs and try and just sort of throw ourselves into doing something at whatever tempo a song happens to be. If you can learn how to focus and concentrate on the, the sort of more uh, minute details of your coordination, the effect on your drumming will be very good. So learning how to kind of drill stuff like this is a great idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said before, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one lessons if you feel like I could help you in any way. But otherwise, I think it's time for you to go away and practice.